and let's go here so okay so we're, we're first we have to understand how a string is stored in memory and once we have a good understanding of that then we should be able to understand why we can loop through a string how we can loop through a string and how that, all that works okay so let me okay I just want to make sure that I had covered that piece. So in last week's lecture, I had talked about the computer memory. And uh, I think I should probably at least go through it again just to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. So let me see here. Okay, so computer memory, also known as random access memory, but it's uh, allotted to the computer, right? So the computer has memory, so I mean all of this block here is memory. And we have memory for Windows or Mac or Unix. And we have Windows, for example, I'm running OneNote. So OneNote is allotted some memory. And assuming I was running, running Python on my machine, then Visual Studio Code gets its own memory. And every single time we run a Python program, so assuming this is one of our Python programs we run, it gets some memory allotted to it. And if we peek into that memory, it's broken down into several blocks, right? So there's something known as stack, something known as heap. All of these are different types of memory. They uh, globals memory and some other memory, right? So we're mainly interested in stack memory and heap memory. Why? So Stack memory is usually like the scratch pad for programs. When a program runs and you have functions in, the, functions in the program, the function is loaded onto memory with any parameters and any variables that are defined in the function. And heap is memory that's used to store data for st strings and lists. Today we'll focus on strings and we'll, I'll explain what a, what a string is, right? So it's an essentially a simple list, but we usually refer to it as a sequence of characters. It could be numbers, it could be letters, it could be symbols, but it's a sequence of characters. And the computer, when it's working with strings, it treats numbers like letters, meaning you can't really perform arithmetic operations on strings, okay? So if we take a peek further into stack and heap, we can go to another page and we can investigate it a little more, right? So, so we have stack memory. And then we have heap memory, usually also referred to as free store, okay? So assuming we have something like this, like name, or maybe not name, like L-A-N-G language equals C plus plus. Okay, we have that. Language equals C plus plus. I didn't do Python because it, it takes more letters. And Okay. strings in memory so when our program starts running this is code and if it's code it has to be loaded onto memory 
<clears throat> so now the question is, well, how is it loaded onto memory? Okay. <clears throat> so this variable has to be re uh, referred to or saved to some block, right? These blocks are memory addresses. So we have lang. Obviously not the not the word lang is in there, but I just put it there too, so that you can visually see, okay, this memory block is where data that belongs to lang will be stored. If we uh, look at a simple number like num equals five, that one would go here and the value five would go here for num, okay? So our first thought might be oh so then we put c plus plus here this is one memory address one memory address so the answer is no that would not go there okay instead c plus plus would be in heap memory or free store that's memory reserve memory reserved or used for strings lists and other data list data structures okay right now again we're focused on strings so now the question is well how does this memory address know that its contents are in this block here assuming i'm just going to make up some number this was like y120 y represents some very large number so the answer is we would be dealing with an address. So then lang, this address would store the value 120 and we usually indicate that it references that block with an arrow. So that's how a string is stored in memory, okay? If you uh, look at examples for, for uh, strings and how to loop strings or how strings are stored in memory they usually say well c would be in one memory block plus would be another memory block and this would be in another memory block so in essence what they're doing is they're like condensing the diagram that i created for you here and they're just focusing on this this three blocks here this here and this here and this here right those three blocks however i i, I don't think that lends it, itself to like understanding truly like how a string is in memory and why is that important it's important because then we can understand how we can loop through strings right the book will say well there's an index here and then it's zero one two so if your var variable name is lang, then you can say lang and then subscript operator, open close bracket. And in here, uh, let me not make that line so big. You use the index. So if you say lang of one, then you are referring to that and if you would say two then you would refer to this one and if you would say zero then you would refer to this one which is easy to understand but i think like as, as a as a student like it just narrows you focus into that and then it's kind of hard later on where they're trying to teach you memory and code concepts to like get yourself and get the, the higher level overview right so if we go back over here that's what i'm opting for because I feel that the better you understand what memory and how memory and code work with each other, uh, in the long run, it'll, it'll, it'll be better for you, right? So can we deal with indexes here? Yeah, like I can tell you, well, you know, this would be index zero, this would be index one, and this would be index two. So if you want it to access this in code, then you would also do the same thing, lang, of one and if you display that that would display the value plus okay but now you're getting the full picture like you're like oh okay 
So that's how it works. So you may be wondering, like, do I need to know this for a quiz? No, I will not quiz you on this, but you do have to know that that's how you access characters in a string, okay? And that's important because then we can be like, oh, okay, so now we can we can look at uh, some examples with loops and we can understand that we can like increase a number in a loop and then we can be accessing a character at a time, okay? So that's what this diagram's purpose is. And if you take uh, my class next, uh, your C++ class, then we really take a deep dive into memory. We, we spend like four to five weeks of just dealing with code and memory so that we can understand how that works and why is that important? Because it'll help you for programming three. Okay, so questions here on like how strings work in memory. Okay, so C is like zero and then the plus is one. So it's just one thing. I'm get it's the, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's just a different, there are three indices and the first one always starts with zero, correct? Yes. I'm asking because this was from my digital fundamentals class. So I know what I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we can we can assume this is like one word. What word? This right here, right? Lang equals C++. So this C++ here, that's the sequence I'm talking about. It can have letters, it can have symbols. The computer uh, will understand, but we humans, like we say, that's a string, a sequence of some characters, okay? So now, how do we go from this to some code? Okay, so let me, uh, I'll stop here and then.